You know I love a good creativity challenge and who better to get our creativity flowing than artist, educator, all around creative dynamo and recent honoree for outstanding service to her profession by the Maine Arts Education Association. You know where you love her, Susan Bryant, reveal yourself. Hi. Hello. Hi, Susan. There's so many amazing Susans in the Zoom Hi. today. I'm going to toss it over to you and I'll see you in a little bit. All right. Hi, I'm Susan Bryant. She, her, broadcasting to you from Bangor, Maine on Penobscot land. And I am an art teacher and always nervous when I do these things. So please treat me with tender love and care. I'm going to share with you a creative challenge that I worked on with my high school students in the last few weeks, inspired by the visual aspects of Kentridge's production. Let's see how I do at sharing my screen. I believe in myself. Here we go. How am I doing so far? Okay, we can see a picture. This is a great start. My students and I first got to know William Kentridge's work last year before we went to see Vazek. So we watched an amazing uh, video that if you're interested in uh, his ideas as an artist, you can watch it on PBS. It's an Art 21 episode. And we learned a lot about his process. And one of the things that's so interesting about William Kentridge is this philosophy he has of meeting his material with the production. So he thinks about an art medium and how it could fit and help tell the story. In the case of Vazek, he talked about how the charcoal drawings fit the kind of gloomy gray skies. And in uh, Lulu, he uses the phrase that he was grabbing the vehemence of a black brush stroke really strong imagery that I, I really liked. And that's what I latched onto. I think that, that idea of matching a art process or material to the, a theme in an opera itself could be the creative challenge. And then I could just log off and take a nap. I think that you're, you could take that with your students and, and really run with it. But what we did at the high school was we looked specifically at the use of black ink and how that black ink could convey the story, the passion um, of Lulu. Now, I, um, I think that most of us are also familiar with Vazek, but uh, you can see a similar kind of aesthetic. My students love this kind of almost like a three-dimensional collage effect that Kentrich gets by layering uh, drawings that are projected onto the scene in fact, there's so little set because so much of, of the imagery is telling the story. You kind of get a cue as to how the characters that are on the, the, the stage at the moment feel about Lulu and about what's going on just through these simple black ink drawings. Of course, we say simple because Kentridge is kind of a genius and everything he does looks brilliant. Um, but in general, Kentridge's work and manner of working and his materials are really approachable, which if you're teaching in a public school, we like approachable uh, materials, things that we can grab onto and play with and experiment. And I think um, the accessibility of these materials, especially when you're looking at Lulu in the, the opening scene, we have these exaggerated paper um, additions to her costume. These feel like things that we could try and play around with. And that's what we did. I think Stephanie mentioned that my school, we're in person. And I know that a lot of people aren't. We've been in person the whole year. And so we started this project working at home. This is my, my high-tech video equipment here. I had a document camera, a projector, a white piece of paper, and my laptop for the students to use. And our art materials were black ink, brushes, paper, a stapler, 
and you don't even have to use an amazing vintage stapler like mine, any stapler will do. Some masking tape, a pair of scissors, and they set off in groups to try and create a vignette. They worked on making costume and imagery that would be projected behind their character. And some even selected clothes from home to wear. And they put them together into short clips, trying to capture a moment. In this case, obviously from Lulu, um, the, the moment where she's being drawn by the painter and we're seeing images of how he views her plopping down um, and popping up behind her. My students also use the same approach to look at other operas too. So this group was trying to capture the moment um, where Brunhild and the Valkyrie descend. S some amazing high-tech costumes were made. Some scenery, all with just ink. They made this amazing contraption. You can watch it at work here. You can also see how clean my classroom is. Forgive, I'm an art teacher. Very low tech. And you can see Brunhild descending through the clouds here. Now, you might notice that my, my students aren't all necessarily as comfortable as maybe some of your theater music performance students are. Um, we have some strategies for that. And we had to build a lot of strategies actually because right after we started this project, um, the kids headed out onto the bus and then we got an email that said we were gonna be going home for five days. So this ended up, instead of being a project with these materials, we ended up doing a lot of work at home, which is nice if you're like me and you're shy. Um, here's that same scene acted out, but with paper cutouts, no one has to see your face. No one needs to know that you're sweating right now like I am a little bit. And we had some students that are at home all the time anyway. So this student here was acting out um, with black ink and paper, some scenes from Hansel and Gretel. And um, you could even dress up your Bratz doll if you don't want to wear a costume yourself. We are very flexible here. So when we ended up at home, we had to rethink this project. And knowing now that a lot of you are at home, maybe this is going to make it more accessible for you too. Um, on the right here, you can see this is back in the classroom, but at home, uh, Zoe here was working on building her little scene from Lulu using paper bags and, and ink that she had at home. What we did next was some quick fire characters. So we got back in the classroom last week. And so we did a few of these on Thursday and Friday this week to show you. Um, quick fire characters, we're just thinking about what's the bare minimum to get the point across. We started out by connecting characters to Lulu. I mean, it doesn't take much to show a broken hearted painter, just a few little scribbles on a piece of paper. And if you end up in this situation like Franny where your knife kind of looks like a leaky sieve, you could always just rip the paper and hope they guess it right. We had a lot of fun doing that. And then on Friday, we decided we would just go all, all out with a bunch of operas that we knew and we did some opera charades. And we decided props aren't cheating if you make them yourself. So first we made a list of all the operas that we've seen together in the last four years that we could remember clearly. And everyone picked one and they got a couple pieces of paper and a Sharpie and sat down and tried to sketch out a really quick little clue. Here we have Akhenaten. A few characters from Porgy and Bess. Maybe you recognize those evil eyebrows of sport and life. Uh, we love Marnie. So a sneaky purse full of stolen goods for Marnie. And a couple of people came up with the scissors and hair for Samson and Dolly Law. And this student here played around again with Hansel and Gretel. That one really stuck with us and we love that one this year. So 
Do you want to play? Is this something you want to try with your students? Maybe your students can't draw. Maybe you're not at school. Uh, there are is a creative challenge built into every opera for me to come up with the creative challenge itself. So if our challenge is to capture the essence of an opera or a character, we did it with Sharpie and white pieces of paper and we spent about three minutes. So we had a time limit to add a little bit of interest to it. But there are as many different ways to do this as you and uh, your students can be creative. So I have a couple down here um, and I would love to hear some other ideas from you about what you might do in your classroom if you were trying to get students to communicate what they believe is core about a character. Um, again, we did a quick line drawing, but maybe uh, we did this in, in my class. Okay, everybody, we're at home. Instead of making your costume um, from paper, run in the next room and grab something that you could use as a prop to represent the character that you have in mind. Or uh, maybe right now we could all just put a string of emojis in the chat and uh, let me know what you're thinking of for other ideas. I, I'm not sure what the protocol is here, but what I'd love is if people would um, pop into the chat and maybe share an idea or two. Let me see. I'm looking for the chat. <laughs> a tableau. Excellent. It's already a good one. What other kinds of, what might you do with your students? I know a lot of you aren't our teachers. So uh, if you want to get that to the heart of something in terms of the themes uh, from a literary standpoint or maybe um, music, is there something in your fridge or pantry that represents the character or what they might want to consume? Susan, you know I love food. I, way too many of my challenges are about food, but it's just so universal, you know? I think food is always a great challenge. What would they be eating? A playlist to describe their journeys. Timothy, that is a really good one. Oh, they would love to do that too, wouldn't they? A song. Yeah, especially if you're at home. Does, does, students probably would not be like reaching for the vinyl like although some of them not it's back in style so maybe they would all right fancy great background music to images is a really good idea yeah we we um the met gives us those lovely little audio clips too so you can add some sound to the back um, Carrie Ann Otano in Memphis, uh, from our friend from Memphis, Memphis Opera just said, collaborate with online art gallery to find a piece of art that represents a character or a show. Carrie Ann, come on, that's amazing. Yes. Absolutely, especially for visual arts teachers. And I know there's not a lot of us on here, um, but finding another art form, it's following that same vein of Kentridge looking at art materials that fit the feeling. So what if we tried it right now and I asked you to just put emojis in the chat and we'd see, try and guess which opera from this year. See if you can guess, does anyone dare? Or is anyone brave enough to get a Sharpie or a black pen and a white piece of paper and draw themselves a costume or a prop? This is an interactive session. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do if you're if you're if you're down to play opera charades, if you can raise your hand, either human or emoji hand, and I will I will add you to the spotlight. Don't be don't be shy. I'm doing it. I'm adding myself. Yeah, please don't be shy because I am, and I love passing it off to other people to avoid. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm going. What do we say? Volunteer or be voluntold? <laughs> Tim Brendler, you're about to get voluntold. Uh, can I write that down? Oh, uh, Andrew, I'm, I'm volunteering you to join us. Do you have something to write with? Come on, get in here. Joanne, are you joining us? Joanne Mead in New Hampshire? Come on. You don't? You do. Come on. The thing is, I know you all, and I know you're not actually shy people. So this is... I know you're not even art teachers. You perform on purpose. Come on. <laughs> I'm so red right now. Can you keep... Oh, Andrew, I can unspotlight you. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> she hit herself. Oh, no. Sorry. I know. I mean, I'm definitely spotlighting Tim Brenner. He's down to clown. Let me follow up 
for it, isn't he? I know. Everybody else turned off their cameras. I went to the bathroom. You this know is how perfect. I feel that time Susan Blackwell asked me to stand up in front of that whole group. And <laughs> I almost died, but I've forgiven her because I had personal growth. I love you, Susan. I also love you. All right, we're ready. I'm ready. You're ready? All right. <laughs> oh. Oh, Andrea got her paper. Okay, she's back. Okay, here we go. There we go. Okay, good. You you weren't, uh, I wasn't embarrassing you. You were just looking for supplies. Okay. Whew. While we're waiting, Laurel had a great idea. Generating symbols to represent the emotions or plot elements of the storyline. That's cool. That would be a thing you could do right now too. Just draw them out. Mm -hmm. If you dare. Um, should I, I, I'll unmute all of our uh, game show contestants here. There we yeah. go. Yeah, great. <laughs> Everything's fair game, right? We're not doing this season. Ever you've ever seen. Okay. And if we can't guess it, shame on us. For not <laughs> but really, shame on the Met Ed staff for not. Knowing. They should know all of them. The crowd turns very quickly on the Met Ed team. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. Are we setting a timer here, or we just we're going? We're in it. Uh, I'm ready. Whenever somebody has something that they want okay. to show, and if anyone, how about if you just had to sum up an opera in only three words and type them in the chat if you're not a visual kind of person? Oh, I like that. Okay. Add that and I think you could guess. Okay. You can also turn off your camera and run to the bathroom. <laughs> we won't call on you. I see some people that look like they're drawing, so I'm excited. Carrie Ann's got something going on. Maybe. <laughs> Miss B is is less is less more when we do this type of activity. I'm just like I just don't want to. I don't know how many details I should put in this. Well, I think if you were just doing it right now, less is more because we have we're going to see the Countess in twelve minutes. But if you're <laughs> in the classroom and it's a homework assignment, they want to make any kind of detailed drawing they want. You could set the tone for how that works best for the students. Ms. B, I have something. I, I have one. Okay. Okay, ready? I'm ready. Guess this opera. Oh, wait, it's oh, blurring, it? Susan. <laughs> because of your cool filter that makes you look so. You're back. Huh. With oh, yeah. You're... Oh, there you go. <laughs> Can you see it? I got it. I know it. <laughs> and a broken heart that does sound familiar did we just hear about this did we just learned this one I'm electra the answer i'm gonna let someone in class give it a an shot. axe and a broken heart's the name of my autobiography it's gonna be a bestseller i will buy it audiobook and print edition i'm gonna guess electra okay i've got mine ready all right let's see it okay ready set go oh <laughs> <laughs> What do you think it is, Joanne? What do you think? I love it though. <laughs> Wait, you don't know? This is so humiliating. It's Carmen. Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay. you, Laurel. Oh yeah, look, everyone in the comments knew they did. Okay, yeah, she's smoking. I, I have one. Okay. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, a candle flame. We're being oh, I got it. The flame of the candle. Dan knows he's, is he going to type his ID? I'm going to type it. All right. Jen? All right, yeah, yeah. Good that. job, Dan. Simple yet elegant. Okay. Got it. Andrew, are you ready? I have mine. Visual okay. art is not my forte, but here it is. Ooh. Is this a fan? Oh. Yes. Oh, I got it. The fan was a good clue. I saw oh, it. someone said it. Wait, did someone say it? Laurel said it already. Oh, yep. Mary Widow. Yep. Mary Widow. Mary Widow. Yay. I, what is it? I am a respectable, respectable wife. What is, what does she write on it? Uh, I love you. I love you. Oh, right, right. Yep. All right. Okay, Tim. Uh, this is this is very uh, Met Opera specific. I know this one, but I'm not going to share. We talked about this one when we were brainstorming. I think I know this one too. 
the tech. Yeah, Storyin yeah. got that text filled set. We loved that. Very good. Somebody's got Stephanie Wu. Oh, Stephanie Ermston has. Oh, this is good. Oh, I see the Japanese flag. That's a giveaway. Also, a stabbing item <laughs> full of, I'm guessing, like family mementos. This may be Susan Blackwell's emo emoticon autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Butterfly. Butterfly. Nice job, Doreen. So fun. <laughs> Hendrix, don't let it leave a Bangor ram hanging here. Are you making one? Come on. Wait, where you is she? Me what I'm doing to her. It's so wrong. I, I apologize. <laughs> I have another one. Would you like another one? Go for it. Oh, fun. I can't see. I can't see. Oh. Oh, singing to the moon. Oh, you know what? This could go a few ways. Oh, oh. you're right. I never thought of that. Joanne, you turned off your video. I didn't did? Yeah. Good. I only got to see the picture for a minute. So it's there we go. Rusalka is a guess. Is it Rusalka? What else? Mm -hmm. It could have been, but I wasn't thinking Rusalka. I right. think it's the queen of the night. I'm gonna go with magic flute. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, those eyebrows. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. Um, so fun. Okay. It looks like she's got something, but she's scared. Wait, Andrew, are you ready? Wait, did we do your? We did yours. No, I, I did mine already. Yes, we did. Okay. <laughs> Ian has one. Okay. Hi. Okay. It's not great. It's not my best work. Oh wait. Uh, let me let me spotlight you. Hang on. Where'd you go? There you are. Hang on, Carrie Ann. There you go. Can y'all see it? Yeah. I can't see it yet. Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> Can we say it? Oh, oh there we go. Please. Valeria got it. Oh. <laughs> Gretel, that was one. This is fun. This is so cute. <laughs> Good. I'm glad. I think it's such a fun way to like really recap, especially towards the end of the year, once we've really done so many of these. I think it's such a, a really neat way to look back and, and to, especially as a teacher, to see what the kids really took away from it and what they remembered is, I think it's a really cool thing. Yeah, we had fun because I did this with my seniors and my senior group are my opera babies, I call them, because of all the students, they've loved the operas most of all. So okay. everything they fun. I've got one. I've got one more. <laughs> this is really <laughs> this is really basic. I like basic. Let's see it. Okay. <laughs> Help! Oh no. <laughs> Buried in the tomb. Come on, somebody. Jack Nan. Oh, oh, could be. Aida. Yes. Aida. Yes, because they're together. <laughs> Thank you. You see, yeah, those moments you were that stick with you. <sighs> Thank goodness. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Susan, uh, what do you think? Do you think we nailed it? I think we got it. I hope that you guys try this and have fun with it. Maybe it's maybe it's just a little bit of comic relief and not the deepest thing you'll do next week, but <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for playing along. I was scared that you wouldn't and I'd have to keep talking. No, you're you're great. Thank you, thank you.